Hey, what's up guys? It's Nick2. Today I'm going to be showing you guys an updated Pyromancer build that is super, super powerful, an absolute ton of fun to play, lets you just completely breeze through CT15s insanely quickly. Lots of fun. With this build, my second time ever using it actually, I did a Boomtown in only 3 minutes and 24 seconds. I have some gameplay of a separate Boomtown at the end. In the shorter one, I was cussing and you know, YouTube doesn't like that regardless. I also did a camp plant in under 6 minutes, the very first time I ever did camp plant using this build. Considering I'm not a speedrunner or anything and I haven't played with it a ton, that should represent how strong this build really is that you can do maps that fast. Like I said in my other Pyromancer video, there's a ton of variations for anomaly pyro builds, which personally I think is really cool. But now that I have all the gear to set this build up, I wanted to show you guys it because I think that this is my favorite variation of all the builds so far. The main benefit of this version of the build is that it requires way less legendaries than the previous version, but it can also clear maps a little bit faster and I prefer the skills that you use. Also, this build is not only insanely good for solo play, but also very, very powerful for group play as you are going to be buffing your teammates damage a lot with this. So yeah, as you can see, the damage is absolutely insane and let's just get right into it. So real quick, turns out that 86% of you guys aren't subscribed. So if you enjoy the content and you like the video, please make sure to drop a like and subscribe. Helps me out a ton. We hit 100k the other day. So thank you guys. There's a kiss for you guys to take on the road. Anyways, let's just get right into it. Also use code Nick2 for 10% off at Advanced GG. Link in the description. Okay, so... The main difference with this build than the previous build is that we're going to be using Ash Blast instead of Thermal Bomb. If you want to use Thermal Bomb and you have the gear for Thermal Bomb, uh, check out my previous video. This vi this build is pretty similar. There's a good amount of differences that we're going to talk about. It's also a little bit easier to set up if you get the right uh, legendaries, which I previously didn't have. Um, it pretty much based on what legendaries you get early on is what AP build you're going to start out with. Um, but I finally got the pieces to enable me to set this up almost perfectly. So. Your other skills, you're going to be using Heat Wave and Overheat. Overheat is your main source of damage, and then Heat Wave synergizes with the three-piece legendary set that you're using, which is going to get you a lot of buffs and also uh, anomaly power and extra damage stacking on the enemies. And then Overheat is your main damage dealer. And then Ash Blast pretty much works a similar way to Overheat, that you're pretty much just using Ash Blast to allow your Overheat to do more damage. In terms of the class tree, really nothing special here. Uh, just copy-paste this. Uh, pretty much you're just trying to get as much cooldown reduction as possible, and a little bit of extra damage and anomaly power here and there. Doesn't really matter if you think that there's something better that you can go for, uh, feel free to do that, but this is what I found to be the best. All right, so now let's get into the gear. Um, I'm gonna have some gameplay towards the end of the video so you guys can see how the build looks in practice, but also immediately before that, uh, once, we talk, uh, once we're done talking about all the gear and stuff, I'll talk about how you actually wanna play the build because that does actually make a pretty big impact. Anyways, let's just get right into it. So basically you want to be using three piece Akari. Reason for this is every enemy damaged by heat wave grants 50% anomaly power bonus for 10 seconds. So pretty much you're gonna be using your heat wave on a lot of enemies, getting your anomaly power stacked up over and over, which is then going to allow your uh, overheat and your other skill to do a ton of extra damage, which also scales your untamed power a lot, which is, this is one of the mandatory things for this build scales your untamed power up, the more AP you have, the more damage untamed power has. This ends up doing around like 200k hits every once in a while. Ends up being like your second damage untamed power is incredibly strong. Comes on Anomaly's Visage, but it's only a tier 2 mod, so you can get it on a random purple as well. Um, Anomaly's Visage is pretty good though. From this point, we're just going to take a look at every piece that we have, and we'll talk about which the mandatory ones are. Uh, using Anomaly's Visage because it comes with Anomaly power and cooldown reduction, if a piece doesn't have cooldown reduction, you don't want it. That's pretty much how you should see this build in terms of the gear that you're trying to get. Uh, some of the Akari pieces, such as the Akari helmet, uh, it's still good, but it doesn't have cooldown reduction, which is why I'm not using this anymore. However, if you if this is the only way that you can get three piece Akari, then uh, put the helmet on for now, since you can just buy this from Tiago. Put the helmet on for now, and then just uh, swap it out once you have another Akari piece so you can get the three piece bonus. The next part or the next roll, it doesn't really matter. Ideally status power for this build, but not gonna make too much of a difference. You can go skill leech, a little bit of survivability, whatever. And then I have increased Ash Blast range. This pretty much makes it cover nearly the entire map. So that's incredibly good and you definitely want that. And then you want untamed power. Both of those are mandatory. Then we move on to the chest piece. Getting this is completely mandatory for the build as well. Armor the Akari, so it's another Akari piece, but it's also going to give us tier three detonator. So every time you or overheat has a 50% reduced cooldown. And like I said, overheat is our main source of damage. So without this, you're kind of a wet noodle with this build. It'll still work, but this allows you to use your main damage skill, you know, way more often. So 
very powerful. And then we have Ride the Wave, where Heat Wave, you can activate the skill one more time. Uh, this is particularly good when you pair it with another thing, which we'll talk about in a second, but it's very good with Akari as well. And for my pants, we have the waist cloth of the Akari. Comes with AP, CDR, whatever. And it has Anomaly Echo and Emergency Stance on it. Anomaly Echo isn't great, but it gives us a little bit more base AP. And our percentage AP is going to scale off of our base AP, so that's pretty good, I guess. A little bit flat of Anomaly Power. And then we have Emergency Stance. Emergency Stance is what we're using for survivability. Um, eventually, inert Emergency Stance is probably going to get fixed. Right now, it gives you a constant 65% damage reduction. So it's pretty broken, um, but once it gets fixed, we're going to end up swapping this to, we would literally just do this, where I open this up, and then we swap the Blacksmith, uh, overheat each stat is consumed, grants 52k armor for 8 seconds, stacks, and it stacks up to 8 times, so you can pretty much easily run around with armor cap, uh, which is 85% reduction, which I think is like 350k armor, uh, you can pretty easily get to armor cap when using this, it's incredibly powerful, you're constantly consuming statuses with overheat, and you're frequently using overheat like on cooldown pretty much so you pretty much run around with armor all the time um alternatively these pants by default roll with a radiation wave on the bottom slot where i replace that with emergency stance uh where heat wave inflicts weakness which is going to make them deal less damage to you once they have weakness on them not as consistent survivability but it's pretty decent i just went for anomaly echo because i want that big boy damage uh, but you could just keep a radiation wave if you wanted if you got the pants there and then for my gloves, we have, you know, AP, CDR, status power, pretty much perfect. Then we have Pants on Fire, another mandatory mod, uh, just increases the damage of overheat pretty much whenever it hits somebody that doesn't, you know, that doesn't have a status on them. Uh, this is particularly good at ad clear because a lot of the time, and this, this number is going to scale up with your AP, uh, a lot of the time you just can ignore a lot of the small ads and you can focus elites. That's kind of how you play this build. And then just, just by pressing overheat so much, the... The ads that are like in Narnia are going to end up dying, especially because Pants on Fire is active. Then we have Captain Hunter. Captain Hunter is one of the only spots, or mods rather, that you can flip around. One thing you can do is get another uh, Heat Wave mod here. You could even get, um, you could even put on Fire Tsunami instead of Captain Hunter so that the width of your rain, your uh, Heat Wave is longer. You could make it to where you have a third Heat Wave so that when you're playing with friends, the extra damage stacks up via uh, Heat uh, Burnt Out. You could basically burnt out stacks up every single time you heat wave. So if you have a third heat wave, you could get it up to 75%. That's also another thing you can do. Or you could use uh, Phoenix Flames, which is pretty decent. Phoenix Flames, I don't think, is mandatory, though. I, I think that instead of Phoenix Flames, it's better to use Captain Hunter, just because a lot of what gives us grief is the elites, and being able to kill them quickly is really what we care about. Whereas getting extra ad damage, we don't really need because we're already spamming overheat so much. However, um, if you don't if you don't have Captain Hunter, you could very easily just swap this out with a uh, sorry Phoenix Force, where you earn extra AP per status consumed by the skill. So that'll be pretty good because you're going to consume statuses a lot with overheat, and it'll just keep up a, a lot of extra AP, which will then make your subsequent overheats do a little bit more damage, which is pretty good. Then for the last piece, absolutely mandatory for this build, and this is what I was waiting to get to be able to do this build is Boots of the Akari. Comes with max health which kind of sucks, but the main benefit of it is that it has cooldown reduction and it comes with Master Consumer. The only better way that I would think of setting this build up would be to put on my helmet and then I could get different boots. Um, but then I end up losing you know, some stuff and I'd have to swap a lot of stuff around. Uh, losing a little bit of base AP doesn't really matter. It's like 13K, you know, whatever. Um, kind of make up for it with Anomaly Echo, I guess. It doesn't really matter. Mainly the benefit is that you get cooldown reduction, where Helmet of the Akari doesn't have cooldown reduction, and getting cooldown reduction allows me to spam my overheat a lot more, right? If I lose that cooldown reduction, my overheat goes up by, you know, 0.6 seconds, and over the course of a map, that could mean, you know, a lot of different overheat uses. So I like getting the extra cooldown reduction, being able to just snap, 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 spam my overheats. But the main benefit of getting the boots, and which is why, you know, you pretty much need these to make this build, is that this skill consumes, sorry, overheat consumes either ash or burn to deal extra damage. Consuming both of them increases the damage by 150%. So this is pretty much the main way that we're going to be killing elites. Because with our weapon monsters, we'll talk about in a second. But pretty much you just spam heat wave on a boss, ash blast, and then overheat them. And then the overheat will just chunk them, just completely chunk them. And then if they didn't die already, by the second time you do this, they will be completely dead. 
pair that in a group with you know maybe a third heat wave so the boss takes 75 percent extra damage and then your overheat is going to completely melt the boss incredibly powerful and that's the sole reason that we're using uh, ash blast and then in terms of our weapons um, our other form of doing damage when we don't have our skills active is with weapon mods we have funeral pyre here because it comes with shadow comet and then we put fortress on it fortress is incredibly powerful because it's going to make all of your skills do 43 percent extra damage and by default you have enough armor to activate this so 100 percent would get fortress on every single gun that you use it comes from the death shield so if you don't have this already definitely make sure to go get that and then that's what we're using in our main hand our offhand we're using fortress again with moaning winds anytime you reload it just does a whole bunch of extra damage and this scales up with all of your other stuff so moaning winds often can be like your second or third damage uh, if you play around it correctly i tried using double moaning winds in animoy with fortress and moaning winds and then a death shield with uh, fortress and moaning winds i didn't really like it um, you could also put moaning winds on like your pistol just make sure that if you're doing it on a pistol, um, make sure that you never try to use skills while your pistol's out because your overheat and stuff is going to do way less damage if you swapped your pistol and you're missing fortress buff. There's a couple other good things like the guillotine um, that, you know, applying vulnerable and doing reload AoE damage is pretty good. Kinetic stomp is pretty good. Uh, but I would just look out for fortress because that's mainly what's going to be the best thing for your buck and... That's what scales the damage up so much. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the build. In terms of how you want to play around it, basically you want to spam overheat on cooldown, and you want to heat wave as many mobs as possible. Particularly try to focus around elites. So if there's an elite on a map, try to focus the elite, heat wave him a couple times, you'll get enough AP just from that. And then Ash Blast to apply Ash, and then he's already you know on fire, and then you just consume it with the overheat. That's basically how you want to play the build. A lot of the time, um, my main recommendations for playing this is to just ignore a lot of the ads. The ads will just die just by you spamming overheat. If there's only ads up, then yeah, you know, you have to kill the ads. But more often than not, you want to focus the elites first. And then if the ads are still up, then you can, you know, overheat them afterward. But usually they will end up just dying. Obviously, you can watch the gameplay and see how I play with it. But also, uh, feel free to check me out on Twitch as I'll be using this build a lot. So... Yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, hopefully, hopefully you guys did enjoy. And uh, yeah, good luck making the build. And I'll see you guys over on Twitch. Be sure to drop a like, subscribe, etc. And enjoy the gameplay. Alright, see you guys. Legendaries haven't really touched the surface yet. You start getting legendaries a lot once you get past like PT10. Everything is dead there, so that, that's good. That's good for the boys. Don't have to worry about those guys. Perfect. Alright, so that's pretty good. I'm just going to upload this run regardless of what it is. I've gotten a faster run before, but I can't put that one up because uh, I was using curse words. And YouTube is a platform made for five-year-olds, so if I if I say a curse word, uh, me, no, me no makey no money. Big flash, flash of travel. I didn't even have to moaning wins that guy, but whatever. We we play it safe. So what I think is five head here is to actually heat wave both of them, and that other guy just dies from it. Right there's a little spooky for us, but it's all good. The other guy just dies from it there. This guy will just die to overheat from far away, but I'll just kill him just in case. I, don't, I actually have no idea if that guy triggers a different spawn or not. No clue if he triggers a different spawn. I should not have Ash Blast, I should have just waited for my Heat Wave. so awkward this guy comes down like after all his boys are dead. Well, this is fairly, fairly decent speed. Come on, don't get worked. Or, yeah, come on, dude. One of your builds you recommend to use the farm for the AP build? I got it while using firepower build. 
I'm not certain that that's what I would completely recommend. I love this whole room just getting completely collapsed up. You just shadow comet the door here. Walk in, show them who's boss. Right, this is actually this is actually a pretty decent run. As long as I don't, you know, randomly get clapped up by this guy. Which uh, he has a tendency to do. You got this? Yeah. I, this guy has a tendency to be a loser. For some reason he doesn't want to get shadow commented there. Yeah, he he does affect resist, which, you know. Resisting all of our damages is not what you like to see, um, but it's okay. We'll Ash Blast again once we have our... Got our double Heat Wave up. Please stop with this. I would appreciate it if you would stop with this. So, he, I don't know how you deal with him being effect resistant. I actually have no idea. This run was way faster than the other one in every single way. You didn't get heat waves on the minion. I yeah, I don't know. That was just like really scuffed on the boss kill. But I mean, everything else is fine. I mean, that's good enough for YouTube. I've gotten faster. I can get 320 if that boss actually dies. I don't know how to make him. I have no idea how to make that guy uh, actually take damage because he goes effect resist. Over and over again, and then you're you can't use MC. Oh, triple legendary! The boys on YouTube are freaking out. Hey guys, before I look at my legendaries, drop a like and subscribe to the video. I know that you didn't do that already, so do that. Get baited. What do we get? Oh, 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 oh give me the helmet. Dymo Grim Marrow Gauntlets. Come on, dude. I don't think I had the gloves actually. What even are they? Using the skill grants to eight seconds of weapon damage bonus for each affected enemy. Oh, dude, is there a firepower pyro build with heat wave incoming, incoming? All right, well, that's the video. Hammer's fuzzy, whatever. I mean, I was trying. I, I feel like I was doing that fight. I like, yeah, I understand that that's what you're supposed to do. But he literally wasn't taking damage from the overheat because he was effect resisting everything. I mean, it was eight, eight seconds worse than the other one, but it was faster at every other part than the other one. I keep getting black screen when trying to talk to NPC. I have no idea. I did not have that problem. Is the camera good, guys? 332 is not fair. Yeah, that's the pyro life. Oh, oh, oh. let's not close this because I think people will, uh, people on YouTube might want to see it. So, overheat by far is all your damage, and then shadow comment, untamed power, then moaning winds. I could probably do a little better with the moaning wind swapping, but usually you kind of just clear ads with uh, all your stuff, and you just swap to moaning winds when you when you're going for bosses.